Hello and welcome to the channel. The judiciary is certainly going to catch some flux, plenty of flux in the coming days. It is sink or swim for them, caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. It is a lose lose situation for them. No other way to call it. Uphold President Tinubu's declaration by Heineck and its mayhem. Declare Atikwa Bubaka winner and its mayhem. Rule in favor of Peter Hobby and its mayhem. Or the rerun and its mayhem. So what could be a favorable outcome that would not result to mayhem? Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you. On handing debate over all highs on judges' billboard removal. Never in the nation's electioneering history has the judiciary courted attention like it is doing presently. Seen as the last hope of the common man, the judiciary has been commended and condemned in equal measure depending on the popularity or otherwise of its decision at any given time since the return to a democratic mode of government in 1999. The issues at the moment are two petitions filed by the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party and their presidential candidates in the February 25th election, Atiku Abubakar and Peter Hobby, respectively. As rightly predicted by political commentators, the presidential race lived up to its three-horse race talk as the trio of Bola Tinubu, Atiku and Obi breasted the tape in first, second and third place finish in that order, with the independent National Electoral Commission declaring Tinubu the winner of the poll after garnering a total of 8 million 794,726 votes to see of competition from Atiku, 6,984,520, and OB, who garnered a total of 6,101,533 votes. However, neither Atiku nor OB accepted the outcome of the election, citing alleged non compliance with the Electoral Act. 2022, which provides for the electronic transmission of election results to high next viewing portal in real time, among others. And despite pleas from eminent Nigerians, including the Sultan of Sokoto, Saad Abubakar III, to accept the outcome of the election, both men filed their petitions and vowed to walk the entire legal distance to prove that the election was fraudulently conducted. Submissions, written and oral, have been made by both parties and the election tribunal is now on the verge of giving its ruling. But last week, a dramatic twist occurred when billboards bearing the inscription all eyes on the judiciary mounted at strategic locations in the federal capital territory drew Nigerians' attention to a sustained pressure on the learned justices of the election tribunal to dispense justice on the matter without fear or favor. Before now, Atiku's lawyer list and director of planning and strategy of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, Don Pedro Obaseki, had in several media outings called on the judges to remember that the eyes of the world were on them. This was even as he claimed that Atiku's team monitored actual voting nationwide on satellite, insisting that results collated and announced in favor of Tinubu were altered in some states of the federation against the PDP presidential candidates. Encouraged by an army of netizens led by a Twitter group, Violent Space, OB is convinced that the litany of controversies surrounding Tinubu coupled with identified gaps in the election that brought him to power is enough for the tribunal to either declare OB the winner or in the alternative, or their rerun. The former Hanambra state governor, the only candidate to secure over 25% of votes cast in the FCT, also believes that the failure of Tinubu and Atiku to demonstrate sufficient popularity in the nation's capital places him in the driver's seat to Asorok. As it were, the panel is under tremendous pressure to do its job. Arguably because in the past, some decisions taken on electioneering matters did not sit well with millions of Nigerians. The 2020 controversial Supreme Court judgment that declared Ope Uzodima as the winner of the 2019 Imo state governorship election readily comes to mind. Recall that in its Nigeria Corruption Index Report 2018 to 2020, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission ranked the judiciary top in the ignoble list with about 9.457 billion naira said to have exchanged hands as bribes. In the report, 
six female judges claimed that they were off for the sum of 3.307 billion naira, while five of their male counterparts said they were offered 392.2 million naira in what the anti-corruption agency said were cases of outright demand and offer of bribes, mostly linked to election matters. The report read, overall, the justice sector had the highest level of corruption with a score of 63. The level of corruption in the justice sector was heightened by stupendously high amounts of money offered as bribes to judges by lawyers handling high electoral and other political cases. A large percentage, 73% of justice sector respondents, did not experience a situation of outright demand or offer of a bribe. Nevertheless, it remains alarming that 16% of respondents had experienced such blatant demands or offers of bribes. Follow-up discussions indicated that the cases of outright demand and offer of bribes were mostly linked to election matters. Money involved in high-level corruption in this sector was categorized into money demanded, offered, or paid. Demands are made by court officials, including judges, while bribe is offered and lawyers or litigants make payments. The total amount of money reported by the justice sector respondents as corruptly demanded, offered, and paid between 2018 and 2020 was nine billion four hundred and fifty-seven million six hundred and fifty thousand naira. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and please turn the notification bell on. Thank you. 78 respondents constituting 8.7% of all justice sector respondents reported offers or payments of bribes to influence the judicial process. Out of the 78 justice sector respondents who reported amounts of money offered or paid, 63 were lawyers. This number makes up 9.9% of all lawyers surveyed in the justice sector. The 63 lawyers that reported payments were mostly male, being 69.8%, while their female colleagues constituted 30.2% of that population. In all, the total amount of money reported by lawyers was 5,733,986,000 naira. The amount reported by female lawyers was 918 million 45,000 naira, while male lawyers reported 4 billion 815 million 941,000 naira. However, as Nigerians await the tribunal's ruling, it is imperative on the part of both the government and the petitioners alike to keep an open mind and be ready to accept the outcome regardless of where the pendulum swings. The law does not pander to emotions but facts and evidence. It is the expectation of the world that the learned justices will be guided by a sense of patriotism in this assignment capable of making or breaking the very soul of the Nigerian state in the weeks ahead. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.